Um, first off, I have a an image for you. I see a, like a seaside landscape. So there's like waves on the bottom. There's this cliff, rocks and some cliffs, and there's a lighthouse. I like the imagery of the lighthouse for you guys because um, the the lights are constantly turning. It, it goes around in a circle, so it has like a 360 degree turn. You know, like um, it's constantly moving around. And um, when we see the lighthouse, it's basically a, a warning for ships that there is um, sh like a shallow water nearby. There's also rocks and crevices and, and things like that. So it's a, sort of like a beacon for the ships to, you know, stay their course, to um, let them know as well that they're heading into land. So in a way, I feel like, you know, this imagery is very appropriate for Aquarius because your light shines for all people. And I feel like this is one of the most honorable thing, well, among many, but I feel like this is one of the, the best traits about you guys. You like to share your wisdom. You like to share your knowledge. You want to uplift humanity. And I feel like, you know, even let's say if you're dealing with somebody that you hate, okay, you would never do things to sabotage them. I don't feel like that's an Aquarius thing. You might tell yourself, you know, I don't like so-and-so. And that means you will try to steer clear of them. You won't engage them in conversation. But for whatever reason, if you pass them down the hallway and if you see tears streaming down their face and they're, even if they're trying to hide it, you would still ask them, hey, are you okay? Is everything okay with you? Is there anything wrong? Is there anything I can help you with? You would still do that. You would still do that for the other person because I feel that you understand what it means to be human. You understand what it means when we say, you know, it's our obligation to one another as human beings. Like when I say that sentence, I feel like Aquarius people get it. And, you know, for other signs, if they hate, they hate with a passion. And even if they see somebody that they hate with tears streaming down their face they won't ask they won't care they would probably pass by and say that you know oh the other person probably deserved it but i feel like from for for most of the aquarius people even if you hate somebody you know that there are redeeming qualities about everybody and so if someone is distressed if someone is hurt if someone is in pain you put aside your feelings, regardless of how you feel about them. Feelings are personal, and they are also very subjective. And you understand that. So the objective thing is, this person is in distress. I'm going to help them. And so I feel like, in a way, you know, like that beacon of light. Your light shines for everybody. It's, it's not discriminate. It's not, you know, reserved for specific people. It is there for the taking and it is there to assist everybody through their journey or through a very difficult time. And so what I'm seeing here is um, I feel like there's somebody that is um, very jealous of your light, okay? Um, I feel for some of you, this could be coworkers. And I feel like you're making great strides at work. You're responsible. You're where you need to be. You might be wearing many, many, many hats uh, for different, you know, for whatever reason, I feel like you're wearing many hats. It, uh, one day you might be doing this, the next you're doing that, and then the next day you might be called to do something else completely different, possibly in a different place. And I feel many of you are juggling, you know, uh, different responsibilities, different roles, different expectations. For example, you might have, you know, many supervisors that you report to and each one expects different things from you. So you're, you're juggling and you're wearing many hats and you're doing it successfully. Like that beacon of light, people look up to you. People see you as, wow, this person is really successful. This person is very good at multitasking and this person doesn't hog, you know, their knowledge or they don't even hog the limelight. And so their very um, co-workers really admire you. And I feel like amongst that group, there is somebody who is very envious 
because they want to be like you. And um, I feel like in the past, there might have been, you know, sabotage, there might have been subversion, there might have been uh, lots of conflict between you and this person. It's almost like, you know, they, they would make like offhanded remarks about the way you dress, the way you look, um, but they know that they could never touch the things that you do because people know that you do your, your work and you do it well. Um, so I feel like there's some envy coming through from another person because their light seems to me to be very dim. Okay. And f I also feel like, you know, they might have come to you for your help as well, which makes this person a little bit devious. You know, if they benefited from your help and your assistance in the past, then why would they, I, I feel like that might have been the, the breakthrough to allow the conflict to end. Because they're also seeing that you don't hold grudges, you don't discriminate, and you, you don't, you know, withhold information because you want them to fail. So I feel like that might have eased that relationship between you and that jealous person. I see a lot of coworkers here. And um, I'm seeing a relationship partner that you're dealing with who is also very, very threatened by your success, okay? Uh, in a mild way, this person feels like they look up to you and they're like, I wish I could, you know, my mind works like that. I wish like, you know, I could see full circle around me. I wish I had the situational awareness and I wish like I could be so well-rounded because I, I think like, like, you know, the, the full circle 360, it's somebody that sees all sides of a situation and it's somebody who's very well-rounded they know many many things about many many different topics and so when they talk they're able to incorporate a lot of different things from different areas from different disciplines from different um, um, fr from different fields to make themselves truly an expert so I, I definitely feel like you're very well-rounded and they're saying they wish they could be a little bit more well-rounded so in a mild way uh, one of your, the, the person you're dealing with could be like looking up to you and feeling a little bit inadequate, okay? And then in the more extreme way, somebody that you're dealing with, who you might have a crush on, who you might be in a relationship with, they want to hold you down. They want to hold you down. Your light is so bright, they feel that they might lose you. So rather than, you know, making themselves better, rather than working on self-improvement so that they can match your level, because, you know, that requires a lot of spiritual insights and self-awareness. This person is not very self-aware. They want to hold you back. And I almost feel like they're afraid that if your light shines for all, that you're going to leave them. And so they might say things to kind of undermine your intelligence. You might say, you, you might come up with like the most, you know, profound insight. And then rather than saying, wow, that, that, that was really insightful, they might say, but everybody knows that. They might say things to kind of undermine your, your confidence, undermine your intelligence. And Aquarius people do not respond well when somebody makes you feel stupid. Okay. And I feel like that's what's happening here. Um, I feel like it's a relationship partner that has uh, really held you down, undermine your confidence, kind of chip away at your self-esteem. And I feel like getting their approval, getting their love and affection at one point meant a lot to you. But I also feel like you're starting to see the situation for what it is as well. And that's really unfortunate because when you love, you bury your soul to the other person. So I feel like many of you put yourself out there and became very vulnerable around this person. And this person was not enlightened enough to see the situation for what it is. And they might project their insecurities onto you. So rather than making themselves better, they projected all of their insecurities onto you and they really held you back. 
being with this person really held you back in life. They, um, I feel like you felt like you couldn't make plans without them and they stalled on purpose. You felt like you couldn't be a good family member. It's almost like, it's almost like this person was so essential and so vital. Like they're, they're like the center of your, your world and your plans were made around this person. And you might have neglected your friends, you might have neglected your family members. And I feel like you started to see the ramifications of that. I can't isolate myself because of this relationship or this relationship really kept me isolated from the people that I love. This relationship consumed so much of my time. I had to do so much to maintain it. I had to do so much to fix the other person or I had to do so much to fix the flare-ups in the relationship that I wasted a lot of time. And so it was definitely a, an emotional roller coaster. But in a way, I feel like many of you, you thrive on the emotional roller coaster because it, it opens a part of you that is not very readily open, okay? And get off that emotional roller coaster because it's not healthy. It's not the way for us to live. Relationships are actually supposed to be stable. Okay, but I feel like many of you have been really addicted to it because the highs are high. It's like taking, you know, some type of a drug. Uh, the highs can make you feel very euphoric when you have this person's acceptance or when you have this person's love and affection. They seem to me like they they can be very affectionate, but I also feel like they're very threatened by you. They want to keep you to themselves. When they say jump, they want you to jump. They don't want you to listen to other people. They can be a little bit jealous. But the weird thing is, I don't feel like they show their jealousy in a normal way. So for example, let's say you're dating Joe and Joe is very jealous. And you you come home very late, you know, after a girl's night out with your friends. And Joe is like sniffing you for, you know, um, to see if there's like cologne on you from other men, okay? Or Joe is like, uh, gives you the silent treatment because he's, he's jealous. Or Joe is all like, let me see your phone. So, you know, those are um, kind of overt signs of jealousy, right? Like the, that's what we normally deal with. But I feel like this person acts like nothing happens. And then three, four, five days later, they're like, so... Um, Who's the new boyfriend you picked up a few days ago when you went out with your girlfriend? That's what they do. It's very, very covert and it's like delayed response. And they're, they they had, you know, those three days to kind of seethe in, in, in resentment or jealousy. And then they come back at very unexpected, inopportune times. That's what I'm sensing. And so I feel like... You know, if somebody expresses that they're jealous right then and there, you we, we can fix it. We can explain things. We can talk to them. And we can just kind of like um, alleviate the situation or nip the situation in the bud right then and there. But if they wait, when you're like busy doing other things, when you're just like, what are you talking about? When you don't even remember what happened, then it's really hard. But I feel like this is this person's tactic and that's what they do. So... There has been a lot of conflict here. We have the Five of Swords. Five of Swords is nasty conflict. This is like winner takes all, you know. This is sort of like fighting dirty, saying things that you know hurts the other person. It's like using your weakness against you. And winner takes all. One person has all the jewels. One person has all the jewels. The other person is left with nothing. It's like there's no comeback. And there has been an end to this because I feel like for many of you, this is a person from the past, but I also feel like it's somebody that you're dealing with presently. So it, it's a spectrum, the behavioral issues, it's a spectrum in a mild way. They could be very envious and, you know, they, they want to be like you, but they're not um, vindictive. 
But on the opposite end of the spectrum, on the extreme end, like I mentioned before, they could be manipulative, calculating, and vindictive, and very, very controlling. Four of coins, refusing to let you be. They cling on to you. They, they, they hang on for dear life, and they want you to be a certain way. And when you're not a certain way, they might, you know, withdraw their love and their affection. So I feel like there is a, a really strong, like, um, maternal, paternal vibe. And I feel like you're dealing with somebody that might be a little bit older. And they want, there might be generational expectations of what, you know, relationships should be. That's also um, something you might want to think about as well. If you're dating somebody who's different from you ethnically, there might be cultural expectations of what and, you know, for my heterosexual uh, viewers, there might be cultural, generational expectations of what gender roles are supposed to be like. Women do this, men do that. Okay, and then for those who are not in a heterosexual relationship, there might also be that cultural expectation and the generational rift regarding what is appropriate. So... Someone feels threatened by your light, and I just keep sensing this element about you. It's not going to get to you, Aquarius. This is you. This is the epitome of the Aquarius person. Uh, you shine your light. You have your own truths. You have your own personality. You don't deviate from what you like and what you, you know, and pretend like you like something else. You're not going to change yourself for another person. You're content and happy with the person that you are. And you, you're not going to change for another person. And that's what's really threatening to this person about it. As much as you love somebody, you're going to be authentically you. You're not going to, for example, if you hate ballet, you're not going to pretend like you love it and go to a, you know, ballet recital or whatever they call them, performance. That's just not you. And I feel like the other person is trying to change you or they have like in their head, they have this vision of you and they're trying to mold you to that vision. And I don't even feel like you're resisting. I feel like you care about this person's approval and you try and try and try. But there's always something that you do that is unique to you that that irks the other person. So it's like you try and you accomplish it. But then, you know, but that's not you. So it's not going to stick if it's not you. Um, so that's what I'm seeing here. Some of you might be dealing with this in terms of like a coach, somebody who's trying to coach you, somebody who's trying to teach you, somebody who's trying to mold you in a specific image. And they're doing so in a really, they're doing so in a way that is very difficult. And it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be rigid and it doesn't have to be, you know, all rules and, and, and regulations and discipline. It could be fun. It could be a little bit more. They, they should cater a little bit more to you. Or they should at least be a little bit versatile and not do things so much by the book or not, not only have one way of doing things. They should be open to more possibilities. Okay, so you're dealing with someone who's very closed off. If there is a relationship partner, they're very attracted to you. I feel fire energy. Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. I'm also seeing a Capricorn person. There is a stoppage in communication with the Capricorn person for whatever reason. So I'm seeing Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And I'm also seeing an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. We have here the King of Swords. If you're dealing with a uh, fire sign or an air sign, they're really attracted to you. This is somebody that holds a torch for another person. They're carrying the torch. However, it's in the reverse position. When it's in the reverse, and if it's the Knight of Swords, uh, I'm sorry, the Knight of Wands, this is the Knight of Wands. If it's in the reverse, I usually think of it as somebody who's really attracted to you, and they just want to, you know, sleep with you, and they might not be around. And I also feel like they're really, really, really attracted to you. Um, 
I feel like they might make jokes that are, you know, like sexually explicit jokes or um, once again, there's a spectrum. It could be mild or it could be extreme. But when they make these jokes, I feel like you don't know what to say because I feel the Aquarius that's watching this. Anyways, I feel like you're very proper or at least you put on a, a front that you're very proper. It could be somebody at work and in a work environment, you try to be professional and you try to be proper. And I feel like this person might, you know, make those types of jokes. I also feel like, you know, once again, they um, they want to be the center of your world. They, they, they don't want to, you know, have you, share you with anybody. So they could be a little bit more on the possessive end. I see there's communication between you and this person. And I feel like the conflict, whatever conflict you've had, it has alleviated. They're, they're coming in in their sweet phase for this week. Okay, last week I feel like they were difficult. This week they're, they're, they're a little bit more attention seeking. They're sweeter. And so it gets your hopes up. Is what I'm feeling. Um, if it's an air sign, the conflict has ended. Okay. Um, if it's an air sign, I feel like the the conversation is a lot more cordial. The conversation as well is a lot more um, on the platonic front, but there's definitely some underlying things here about you know having two people feeling very sexually attracted to one another. Um, the last thing I want to mention, Aquarius, is um, you're starting to see as well that you have been living your life as independent as you are and as much as you claim to be very, very independent. People's opinions of you matter, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. We all succumb to it. Um, and I also feel like you also start to realize that even when you try to please the other person, it could be a mom, it could be a dad, it could be, you know, whoever, uh, a love interest, a relationship partner that you didn't want to leave you. You try to please, you try to, you know, fit their mold or fit their expectations. And you start to realize that you were very, very unhappy when you did that. There's a sense of comfort when we um, change ourselves for the other person, right? When we try to be what the other person wants of us. There's a sense of like, there, there's a sense of calmness associated with it because it shows us that, wow, I really love this person. I'm willing to change my ways in order to cater to them. There's, a, there's some really deep satisfaction from it. But then over time, I feel like they come to expect more and more and more and more. Or they stop seeing you as the person that you truly are. And then it, it, it then becomes a situation where you're, you go through like an identity crisis. And so you can't really live, you know, for other people's expectations. We can do things that we know the other person would like, but we really can't change ourselves, okay? Because your light shines strong, and I don't feel like anybody can really detract you from from that. Um, I'm also seeing as well, you know, one last thing before we go. So the fact that the lighthouse, it spins, right? Like the, the light in the uh, in the lighthouse, it spins. There could be blind spots, that you're overlooking regarding a person. So I want you to be a little bit careful about that. There could also be blind spots in your knowledge. Okay, so knowledge gaps. If you are aware of these things, it's really important to fill in those holes. Fill in those holes when it comes to knowledge gap. Try to, you know, look both ways so that you're not, um, so to, to avoid the effects of blind spots, okay? There might be other things that you're not seeing in particular about a person. But I, I honestly feel like, you know, things are going to be coming to light. Okay. Um, once again, if you're dealing with somebody, I feel like it's on a spectrum. Okay. It's not as severe as the opposite ends, although some of you might be dealing with that. And then 
others of you there's there's like that mild you know control issues when it comes to another person but there is a spectrum that I'm seeing here and I feel that the the spectrum that I'm looking at here is somebody who could be mild to moderately controlling so just be careful about that and and you know don't try to overlook these things because of how you feel about the other person all right. I hope the reading resonates. I hope it is helpful for you and I wish you all the best. OK.